up, you guys? It's Industry with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up, Doug? Happy Tuesday. Hey, Tina, we are back once again. So I do every be. time. Happy Tuesday. Yes. You got to sing it like that, though? I do, every do, Tuesday. Do it one more time. Happy Tuesday. Next week, I'm going to try to sing it. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. You know what? Okay, I'm just, I tried it. You did it. That's how good. Is, how was your weekend? Um, It was good. We went to Orlando. We flew mm-hmm. down on Friday. We came back on Saturday. We came back Sunday morning. Sunday morning. It was a nice little flight, man. But by the time you thought you was going somewhere, you was back. You was there. I did see a couple videos. Um, I think Santa has the slowest, <laughs> sultry, walk, yes. sultry walk yeah. in the history. Absolutely. Of absolutely. Absolutely. I was like, is my video going in slow motion no. or is she just That's walking? Santa. Absolutely. Between her and Audrina's lean. I know. Audrina got that mad lean, man. For real, for real. Yes, she do. Yes, she do. We had a ball, though. It was fun. We um, Shout out to Keisha Rivers. We went down there for her 10th year anniversary of I Am Flavor Fashion Gala. She had a whole fun, fun field weekend. They had a dinner on Friday, and then the show was on Saturday. They went to church on Sunday. So it was just a really cool award show. It was cool. We enjoyed it. Great invite to go down. Um, I hosted her breakfast that she did. It's a mixer. So I do like a 30 seconds event where you get to come up for 30 seconds and tell who you are and what you do. That way you get to network with people. So thirty seconds flat. So thirty so seconds flat, and I have so a timer. Cut, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't play. I don't play. It don't take you but thirty seconds to say what you do because if not, people will go on and on and on. So the thirty seconds, the alarm goes off. You got to stop. Tell me what you do in thirty seconds, starting now. Hi, my name is Tina Bridges from Atlanta, Georgia. I have a magazine, a perfume line. I also um, produce. Um, artists, comedians, poets, models. I manage models ages 40 and over, and I also act. I do movie production. I also do movie shorts, TV, commercials, videos, and um, you can find me at TLAMGMT.com or TLAMGMT on Instagram. That was 29 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul, 29 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's See? You, and you I know. got everything in there. You I know. might have missed two or three things, but still, I got everything in there. That's how you do it. I see if you have skills. Him, I got skills <laughs> because um, when um, she uh, Keisha used to come to Mary Max and do her mixers here, mm-hmm. I um, saw people was like going on and on when they get up and talk about what they do. So I was like, you know what? Can I run that? And then, you know, put a stop clock on them oh, things. To be in and, <laughs> put a stop clock on them things and get people to, you know, tell what they do and get it over with. You know what I'm saying? But it works and people love it. They they get a, you know, a joke out of it because when the alarm go off, they still want to drag it out a little bit more. And I'd be like, you got to go. You got to go. I don't play. So um, what you do this weekend? I didn't do anything. We uh, welcome eight members into our shrine temple. Oh, cool. That's what's you up. Know, so that was a long Saturday. Uh, so uh, it was a good day, though. Outside of that, I didn't really do a whole lot, nor did I really want to. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that makes I, sense. You're right. You know, I do enough peopling uh, during the week. Peopling, yes, that's a word. People. That's a cancer word. For, that's how cancer people feel. People. <sighs> they can only do so much before Listen. they just over. I don't over. mind being around the crowd entertaining, but it only I can only take so much. Ah, uh, only so much. Only so talking much. about having a party. See, well, see, Boy. mentally I will be prepared for that. Mentally I will know that I'm going to have X amount of people in my house. Yes. And I just can't leave because it's my house. So come that time, I'm gonna be like. <laughs> Yeah. So what you about to do? <laughs> right, no, right, right. Oh, that's your way you gonna get home. No, you know. no, I wouldn't. Mm. I wouldn't do that. I would. You think I just blatantly kick people out of my house like hey, that? Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm not like mad with it, but you know, you would make a reason to get them out. I'd be like, oh, I got a Charlie horse. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's not going to work. <laughs> Charlie Horse ain't going to work. <laughs> How many people are you talking about having, though? Hmm. 
that's the thing. I would say because the the key is trying to have a balance uh, with men and women. True. Uh, Which is very hard to do. It has to be uh, good energy, and most importantly, there would be no phones allowed. So if anybody's seeing this, if I extend an invite to you, if you feel like you can't be away from your phone, just politely decline the invite because phones will be dropped in the basket at the door. Because people want to do karaoke and have fun, and not worry about being embarrassed on social media. So uh, that's probably about. 70 people who might want to to come that ain't going to come because they can't put their phones down and my house, my room. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's like, what else, what else are you going to be doing where people don't need their phones? Because a lot of times there are people use their phones to waste time. See, see, I see what you did there because you are a person that are attached to their phone. No, I can be without my phone. I don't have a problem with that. I'm just asking what other activities you have there to do other than look at each other. <laughs> karaoke is gonna be in the living room, and then my dining room I have a be spade table. So in the basement, I'm gonna have a full setup. It's gonna be a domino table, uh, phase ten, uh, and trunk or uno. It's gonna be multiple card tables. Uh, I may have a DJ at the little stage in the basement, so I may have a DJ so people can be, you know, interactive. And then at some point, maybe we'll have a little duck conversation. Which I'm sure you don't have no problem doing. Would that keep you away from your phone, Tina B? I'm not even bringing my phone in the house. How about that? Because I know you if say I that like you know you get an invite. Yeah. <laughs> I know if I bring the phone in, I'm gonna be on my phone and live and recording folks. And see it, see it. And what? And that would be sad for me to put my co-host out my house so i'm glad because oh. you know the rules though it's the rules. Oh. It's, the, it's the rules it's like what it's like how a model will come to the fashion show without no heels do you go let her walk <laughs> who you go let a model what? oh right yeah uh-huh. models don't walk in my show with no heels mm-hmm. yeah yeah okay i have a i have a what come as you are yeah, yeah okay Come as you are, my uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I do. I, I like the way you, I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. kind of, we got company. Right, got right, company. right, right. You tried to bust see me out. Right <laughs> <laughs> we do have company. But we have a lot of great guests in yes. the house tonight. We're going to bring them up in a few minutes. Um, we're going to go to a quick break. Mm-hmm. And we're going to come right back with more of In the Street with Tina B. Mr. Outley, what up, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, we started um, just a tad bit later tonight than we normally do, but we will definitely um, be here for the whole two hours and have some fun with us. We're going to just push everything back a little bit. Let me put a, dis- oh. put a disclaimer out there. Listen, we appreciate y'all watching the show. We do. Yes. And y'all don't always have to just tune in when the time for the he said, she said. We need y'all to watch the first hour, too, Six okay? O'clock. Yeah. Everybody be like, look, I, I'm going to just wait till y'all. No. We need start, y'all to watch. Start from the beginning. Yeah, start from the beginning. See. And make sure y'all share it. Too. Yeah, I want you to see everything. 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 All right, y'all. We'll be right back with more of In the Street with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up, Joe? Stay tuned. Men and women ages 40 and over. And this is your opportunity to be a part of this amazing agency. Teach runway class where we teach them different turns, um, how to walk, straight walk, couture walk. And I have classes once a month or every other month, depending on the venue. And it's Kayvon Hill, and I am with TLA, Agents Beauty's Over 40. What I like most about TLA is the acting part of it, that we get the opportunity to be able to get out there and be seen and be able to network with all kinds of people here in the ATL and abroad. I hope that you, too, will want to join TLA. Tina Bridges is the best. I have models, I have artists, I have uh, comedians and poets. I have a magazine called Bold Ageless Beauty Magazine, and we also do runway, red carpet events, hosts, and so much more. So you want to be a part of this agency, email me, ababtlb at gmail.com, or Instagram at tlamgmt. And like my shirt say, we stay working. What's up, you guys? It's in the street with Tina B. Mr. Outley, what up, Joe? Hey, 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 and we are back. We are. Yes, and we have a guest with us. We do. Hi. Hi. Oh, <laughs> I see. Why do I see? What? 
I keep seeing I'll, it. I'm gonna see. You know, never mind. I'm okay. <laughs> we got a guest in the house, y'all. Miss Nikki. Hello, hello, hello. hello, hello. Nikki, Nikki. 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 Style. How you guys doing? Yes, Nikki <laughs> Hodge. <laughs> On our lead stylist, Just Styled. Just Styled. So tell us about mm-hmm. Just Style. What is Just Styled? Just Style was basically something that just came upon because I always love modeling. I always love retail. I love everything about fashion. But my main purpose about Just Style is not just to wake up and style anyone just to say, oh, I styled you. Um, my goal is basically to motivate and inspire you to just be you. And just style. That's it. Just be you, do you, have fun, enjoy life. Because at the end of the day, you have to always be yourself. So why not look cute with it? Yeah, <laughs> look cute with it. <laughs> so how long have you been doing that? I've been doing it for over 13 years, but I started my business as far as legit <laughs> <laughs> for about five years now. Oh, five years. Yeah, okay, I started okay. in New York, Miami. Now I'm here. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Where are you from? Originally from the Virgin Islands, St. Thomas. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. I hear a little accents in your voice it comes out yeah it comes out <laughs> absolutely i hear uh, we met through brenda turner yes. thank you brenda Hi. for the connection <laughs> and um i'm supposed to be shooting with you this weekend right? yes november 11th i yep. can't wait so we are shooting this weekend for her mm-hmm. line and um it's gonna be fun it's just it's exciting to meet new people and yeah. and see what they have going on so what do you want to do with what you're doing um, I basically want to um, start a franchise, kind of. I want to just be like a motivator to inspire people that have thoughts of suicidal. Because mm-hmm. I've had thoughts there when my mom died. It's not easy. And I just want to figure out a way emotionally I could help somebody yeah. try to embrace themselves. Wow. Mm-hmm. I have a question. Yeah. So you are a stylist. So you style men, too? I, my preference is men. Yeah. Yes. Um, love my ladies, hey! But um, I do ladies also for events because I've also styled some clients. I'm um, also an upcoming artist, and she's a lady. But I love doing events because I want to show creativity. I want to show you how you can turn this same outfit five different ways. So you can look at a man and say, you know what, this color, this type of suit will work well with him. Oh yeah. So if you oh yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, I what do not color? like black, even though it's my favorite color. But okay. that's that's an easy color for everyone to gravitate to. Okay. Right. I like color. Like with you, you could do a mint green. You could do like a nice coral with a peach. It's like different styles you can do with it. And the main thing is always the accessories. You don't always have to do a bow tie. Mm, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you love his I call it the Miami style. Scott. I'm, I'm, I'm an ass cat guy, so rare. You're rare. A lot of people don't really? even know how to. Mm-hmm. Sure, a lot of people don't. Wait a minute. Camera right now. Yeah, I'm an ass cat guy. Right, same, same. I like yes, colors. But yeah, yeah. Okay. a lot of people don't know how to tie ascots. A lot of people YouTube. I Google everything. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I've never been uh, styled before. Well, hi. Here you go. <laughs> I just gave him one. He's excited. So, so you were, so the man says, "This is how I want to dress." You going buy the clothes? You find the clothes? Or he yes, just, okay. it's based upon. Um, sometimes I'll have clients that come with me. Okay. And then after that, I'll have clients. I'll figure out your size. You mm-hmm. tell me your measurements, and I go from there. And I also do measure too. I always carry a measure tape on, uh, measurement tape on with me. So yeah, got you. Mm-hmm. I might do something different in my life one day and get style. Feel Come like on, somebody. get your style. That's what's <laughs> up. You go, you go to people, or you have a location. No, I go to people. Well, we meet up at the retail store. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Now, do they buy the clothes, or do you? How does that work? How do? If the customer, if the client comes with me, yes, they purchase the clothes. If not, I do ship. Also, like okay. I have a client overseas right now in Philadelphia that I'm working with. So. So they'll them. they'll pay you to go shopping for the yeah. guys. They send me their budget. You, you let me know what your wardrobe budget is, and I go from there. I make sure I stay within it, and I also give you a receipt. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you just put everything together that you think will be nice, right? You tell Has me what anybody ever been like? I don't like it. Oh yeah, woman. Really? Um, <laughs> she's a woman. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, because no, ladies love you guys. I am a woman, but. Sometimes you they don't take it as a compliment. They take it as you trying or even advice. Mm. The first thing they try to think is you're trying to critique them. And it's not that. If you're styled by me, yeah. you're representing my brand. So I have to make sure you look perfect. Mm-hmm. So most men are going to think, well, we want to look good in what a woman thinks we look good in. So you'd be like, hey, you look nice. And now he could be like, okay. 
Uh, sometimes some of them <laughs> come in with their own styling, but I like to style around it. Don't uh, afraid of colors. Like I love colors. A lot of men so, are and patterns too. Exactly. So they want to stick with the, the black, blue, and grays. I'm a page. I call guy. those corporate colors. Yes. I like mm-hmm. page. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know so. Yes. You as red. Well, let me stop saying red because you yeah, can get over there. Yeah, <laughs> this is a post up here. Some of me and my ass. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> I do like Paisley, so that's my thing. Okay. So, um, tell me about where they can find you, madam. You can find me on Instagram at J-U-S-T underscore styles, S-T-Y-L-E-C, or you can contact me via email, NikkiJustStyle at gmail.com. I'm also on Facebook, and I'm working on my website, too, so stay tuned because it's coming. Nice. So there you have it, y'all. The adult prom is coming up December 7th. So, guys, you need somebody to style you. This is who you need to get in touch with. And, ladies, as well, you want her to hook you up and y'all connect the two couples together. It is yes. the best dress contest. So, um, y'all need to get up on that. I'm just saying. All right, so I'm going to win that. With your Oscar? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> with your Paisley Oscar. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You know what? Absolutely. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> what? I ain't gonna say nothing. Okay. I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm, I'm gonna show up. Somebody gonna be like, you know what, dog? I just wanna go home, change clothes. Because <laughs> you, because you, because so you shy. just got styled, huh? Just styled. Just got styled. There you have it. When I put my good shoes out, it's... let me look in the camera. Ooh. Listen, gentlemen, my shoe game. Y'all seen it already. What y'all... size shoes do you wear? Thirteen. Okay. Yeah, y'all, y'all don't want a problem with the shoes. They they <laughs> synced it anyway. I had so we, much fun. Hey, we, 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 we don't wait till you finish. We just chill. Oh, okay, you know. You talking about fashion? See, I like fashion. Yeah, you like fashion. Well, thank you so much for being on. This thank, show. You, you. thank you guys. Thank you. We'll be right back with more in the street with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up, Joe? <laughs> y'all stay tuned. <laughs>
always on point. No, it ain't. What's up, you guys? It's in the street with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up, though? And we are back. We are. Hey. Hey. We got another guest in the house. Another guest. Another guest. What's your name? My name is Basu Black Sis. You look like a Basu Black Sis. I'm, I'm going to repeat honey. that. Basu Black Sis. Black Sis. Mm-hmm. You look so <laughs> regal. <laughs> Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from Boston. Oh, are you? I am. So you say Ka. Yeah, I used to. I've been in Georgia for yeah. 20 years. Oh, so yeah, I'm, girl, please. You say car now. Call. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm from here, so yeah, you say car now. Right. Like, Shouty, what's up? Who the who? Mm-hmm. Why oh, are they trying to stuff. claim people even though they still ain't from their Because city. eight you're years. Here. Once you're here eight long, years, huh? you automatically become Atlanta native. How long you got? I've, I've been here. <laughs> How long you got? Ten. I've been here about 10. Yeah, you're from Atlanta. I'm from Welcome the D. to the A. I'm Thank from you. the D. You're from Atlanta. No, right. you kind of be like, "What up, those shouting?" That what you'll say. Yeah. What up, those shouting? <laughs> you gotta have, ooh, all have, it. Detroit and Atlanta now. You know I, what I mean? I have said that though. I have said that. You, you said have? Detroit first. I have said, "What up, those shouting?" Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Oh no. Okay, so tell us what's going on. Yeah, so we are having an African themed costume and art party at the Delo Loft. And it is going to be November 2nd. It starts around 10 Mm o'clock. It's going to be really awesome. We rented the throne so people can do their photo ops. The purpose of it, though, is to give the artist a platform where they can display and sell their art commission free. Oh, cool. so we're trying to provide a platform for for artists, and then we're just having a nice party around it. So right. we we'll have always a party, food. You know what I mean? Yes. We're gonna have performers, poetry, music, comedians. It's gonna be really nice, and I'm just trying to encourage everyone to find something African, be that a king, a queen, an Orisha, Malcolm X, Michael Jackson. Just come as you know, as one of us to celebrate us. So. um yeah, that's oh, what okay. we're doing. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be hosted by the HBO deaf poet and Tony Award winning Georgia Me. Okay. So I'm Love super her. excited about her because yeah. she is a pillar in the community. And that's what this is about. This is really about trying to provide a platform for the community to be able to express themselves artistically because... It shows statistically that when you do that, you can reduce the rate of crime and a whole bunch of other things in that area. And so we're trying to do that with art. Now, is there a fee to get in? There is. It's a $10 in advance fee. Okay. If you pay at the door, it's 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Cool. And how can I get in advance? Is there a link? Yep. There's an Eventbrite link. You just look up Beats, Bars, and Brushes. That's actually the name of the event. I do it quarterly. And it's Beats um, with a Z, you guys. Yeah. With a Z, beats, bars with a Z, and brushes with a Z. Okay. And you can find that on Eventbrite, or you could just look up the African themed costume party. So we're going to definitely, this is our first one that we're doing, but we're going to definitely do it every year. Cool. Y'all going from 10 to 4 a.m. Yes. we going hard. Like, it's I a party party. It's not I a game. <laughs> I haven't seen a party go that long in Atlanta since I've been here. Since I ain't been here that long. Well, we're on Headland and Delo. So that's a classic Atlanta location. And so we are really trying to just show that um, there's this beautiful space, the Delo Loft. That's an art gallery. Mm -hmm. And we're just trying to kind of put it out there. And so because we have, we can do that. (laughs) Right. Right. I've never been there before. Yeah. Well, it's pretty new. It's just about when I had my rehearsal. Oh, right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, ten to four. Oh, that's gonna be rocking. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of space. <laughs> a lot of space. Space. parking. It's free, yeah, free parking, unlimited parking. So you yeah, take a nap. The that's space what I love. Yeah. yeah, you gotta take a you nap when you come. I told everybody. That. I told my brother that. You get off yeah. work on Friday. You take, take a nap. nap and right through. Take a nap. I'm in bed at nine thirty at night. I'm taking so. a nap. <laughs> you a nap. Yeah, I just oh, definitely grown. Look, you get out there and you party listen, all night. I can't do it. I'm 42. I'm 42 and I'm need my nap. <laughs> I'm just talking junk. I can't even. If it don't, if it start at 10, I'm already asleep. So I know I want to even get out there at 10. I got to get out at 8 o'clock, 7 or 8 o'clock so I can be already out. That's right. all I'm saying. Whatever. You don't even sleep anyway. <laughs> That's uh, what 10 I'm to saying. 4. Yeah, well, we wanted to make it a late party because it is kind of... um. 
you know, around Halloween time. So, you know, we're going to have smoke up in there with the dry ice and everything. It's going to be really awesome. We got and this body your first paint one? live. I know this is my second one. The oh. first one was Gods, Goddesses, and the Equinox. And then this one is the mm. African themed costume and art party. Oh, okay. So every time we do, we just have a different type of theme. Gotcha. And so, yeah, um, it's just kind of taking shape in its own way. The only thing I haven't had yet, actually, is like models and fashion. So oh, okay. I would well, definitely we got to get together. Absolutely. On the next one. Yeah, it's gonna be that. like in March. Okay. So we have much time. Okay. So, um. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. As long as it's not March thirtieth, we'll be no. out of time March thirtieth. Uh-uh. Okay. Cool. Yes. Really? You gonna agree with me? For and that? so, oh, on the back of that is um my Egyptian yoga class. So I do teach. Egyptian That's why I met you that day. You was doing yoga. Oh, you? you probably I did. I came in there. You was doing yoga one day. I've yeah. never done yoga before. I teach Egyptian yoga. You should definitely try it. I you mean, have a it lot of so good habits today. Good for I you. No, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get my life together. Yeah. Don't wear paisley sweats. <laughs> I'm wearing gray sweat. No, never mind. <laughs> oh, never mind. gray sweat don't, season. Don't, don't okay, like right, <laughs> <laughs> right. So you do what? So the yoga classes, you're free, right? The yoga classes, no ma'am. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! No, ma'am. I paid for my certification. Um, my classes definitely cost. How much are the yoga? They're fifteen dollars. Oh, class. okay, okay, so okay. It's not a lot. It's fifteen dollars. You get ninety minutes, and it's like a thirty-minute mm-hmm. meditation, and then uh, sixty minutes of us actually doing the postures. And it's Egyptian yoga, so it's really activating because you kind of go through a creation story, mm-hmm. and you embody the the energies of the Nitiru. Like Isis and my eyes. What's a what a new, what, a new, what, a new, what is that? It's just like an Egyptian, um, an, an Egyptian compared to ours. I would say it's like an angel. How you would have Archangel oh. Michael and uh, Gabriel and all that. So in Egyptian mythology, it would be the Nitiru, my eyes, the one you always see with the arms out, or you'll yeah. see um, Isis or mm-hmm. Aset or Horus or you know Solbet, the crocodile. You know what I mean? So all these different um, aspects. Uh, we embody those qualities. Like my art is balance, truth, and justice. And so we do a posture and we think about that as we're doing it. So it really, really helps to enhance just your qualities of self. You know, it really helped me to bring all of my pieces that I had <laughs> all over the place together, together, you know, and able to to function and as, you know, like a transformer. You know, they got all the little pieces and they yeah. come together and make the big one. Yeah. <laughs> is anybody going to be recording this? Yes, of course. Oh, I see. I can't come. So we recorded the last one. Oh, well, no, not not recording like everybody, but we do have sections of it that has to be recorded like for the artists. I definitely like to give the artists some copies of their stuff, you oh, know. Oh. No, I'm talking about for the yoga. The yoga oh, no, 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 not the yoga. Okay, good. Mm, Just the no, uh, no, event I don't have itself. anybody recording. <laughs> right. No, no. Okay, no. I feel more comfortable then. Yeah, so I do classes. I do private classes as well. I do like corporate <laughs> things. Some, you know, businesses have you come in there and do yoga with their employees right. to help them relax and have a better experience. Right. So, right. Yeah. I've seen this thing where they have trap yoga, which really threw me mm-hmm. off. I like it. Do you? I How do. can you be trapped and sin at the same time? Because you. Um, I think for me, I like trap music. I like trap and music. So, um, and I like yoga. So I can't lose when I combine those things. <laughs> but how can you be calm and hype at the same time? Though? Because it's like you're still breathing the yeah. way that you need to breathe. Yeah. But you're just listening to a different type of music. So you don't know, it's, you're not moving to the beat anyway. You know what I mean? But, you know, when you're doing trap yoga, it will be some extra bouncing. Yeah, <laughs> like right, that right. It just automatically happens, though. Right. <laughs> but it's Absolutely. fun. It's okay. fun. I like the way people have their different things. Like, my thing is sacred space Egyptian yoga. I like to take trips to the mountains to um we went to etoa mounds where it's like an ancient indian um site up there we go to lake ackworth and you know to the beach we went to sapelo island st simon's island yeah so i'm i like to do the yoga outside in nature because i feel you know extra empowerment from those elements and doing it out there so and just finding sacred spaces Mm -hmm. i think that there is um just so much of our history and everything you know um that we can connect through by connecting with the earth and just healing properties. That's the main thing, that these things are so healing for us to connect. They have studies that show when we walk in the forest, the forest starts to communicate with us by sending out endorphins that actually lower our blood pressure, Mm -hmm. increase our T cells that Mm -hmm. fight all types of, you know, diseases and stuff and like actually improves our focus. 
Wow. So, you, you know, read that's a science. Lot. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I've been working in healthcare for a long time. No, so okay. I, I can't do anything that's like spiritual and not logical. Got I you. need to see results. <laughs> so um, with this, I've seen, cool. I've seen results. And so, yeah. That's cool. I'm gonna try that. I'm not gonna tell a bunch of people. But I'm gonna slide <laughs> to the yoga class just to yeah. say I did it. Just yeah. to say you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Know. I mean, hey, that's what you gotta do. And it helps with flexibility, right? Yeah, it helps yeah. with flexibility. It helps and your with your breathing, yeah. with breathing, stamina. stamina. It helps with your back problems. It helps Ooh, with I definitely headaches need and that. blood pressure. Back it helps with cholesterol. Like <laughs> the oh, the benefits cool. are so endless. Why do you think like everyone's going yoga crazy right now, right? They're going yoga crazy because something is actually happening. There is something that you're really, you really get from it. It's well, not- it's a time to relax too, because mm-hmm. you know we're so busy. We always right. on the phone. We always and moving. And it's like that and, me you know, time that you take. Yeah. This when you come to yoga class, that's that I have taken this time for me. Right. To invest in me and, and my inner. You know what I mean? Not just my outside appearance yeah. or my my career, but my actual mind body spirit type things so. nice i love it yeah. well tell everybody where they can find you man oh you can find me on instagram at black sister guys which is b-l-a-k-s-i-s-d-a-g-o-d-d-e-s-s and you can find me on facebook at my government name which is ebony e-b-o-n-i holmes h-o-l-m-e-s i do have a facebook sacred space egyptian yoga and you can also find all of our events that we're doing at the Delo loft so it is an art gallery right at Headland and Delo in East Point. It's a beautiful space. It's black owned and operated. Yes. And um, definitely come check us out. Do your next thing there. Shout out to Weena Holtz. Weena Holtz. Thank you, yes. Weena, for this connection. I appreciate you. She's a great person. I Absolutely. I enjoy working with her. And yeah. yeah. Her spirit is I'm gonna so I'm going to help her make this beautiful. place what she dreamed for it to be, be yeah. you know, because it's yeah. coming. It really is coming along. We've been having some really nice events there, mm-hmm. and we're going to actually have a reggae show November 3rd, which is the next night for my show. It's an wow. all-female band called Soul Rising, mm-hmm. and they're a seven-piece band. So it's wow. going to be amazing. And you're going to be there? I'm going to be there, too. Wait, you get out of there at 4 in the morning? I'll be back there the next night. You know what I'm saying? I got to sleep, you know, Ooh. and then go back. Well, okay. <laughs> Good for you. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. So we'll be back with more In the Street with Tina B. Mr. Outley, what up, Joe? Yeah, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Thank Hold on one you. second. Being ageless, our reality, what over 40 looks like. Big, slow. It's probably more mental than physical, especially when unable to obtain it. But right now, I need her. Oftentimes, pride refuses to allow me to show it. Okay, can you park? I'm parking now. Okay, so once you park, you're going to go get on the sidewalk and walk to the left back towards the park. Where look where the entrance is. Oh, okay, where that gate is? Uh, where that gate is, yes. Okay. And then you're going to go down the hill. And I think, what is it, a right, I think? I think we made a right into there. Yeah, I mean, you're coming up, so you're going to make a right down there, and then you're going to take it all the way around. Let me see if I can get, um, to have Tina to call Anita and see if somebody can come up and meet you. Oh, you went to, okay, that's right, okay. Well, she got her, she got her phone on her, so she'll send somebody up. Is it, has it stopped raining? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> that's, what we, <laughs> that's what we were just saying. It's like we over here on this side of town, and the sun is shining. Yep, make sure. Yeah. Yeah, it did. Well, okay, we'll hit them up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. Oh, boy, T. 
What's up, you guys? It's in the street with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up, Joe? And we are back. We are. That was cool, right? She was so zing. What's the word? Zen. Zing. <laughs> Zen. 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 Yes. I act like I'm yoga. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I, you I, just I found word. out. I know the word. Zen. I, I know the word. I know <laughs> the word. <laughs> you just found the word. Zen. Zen. Boy, stop. But that was cool, my yoga and, then, and then she smelled like the incense and stuff over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love like Frank and Murr and you know what I'm saying? Frank and and Egyptian musk. That's Did he just go like. old school? Yeah, it? Frank and Murray, remember that? Frank and Frank, come on no, now. Egyptian musk is what I remember. Oh, Egyptian musk. Now, I love some Egyptian musk. <laughs> that is everything. Yeah. Everything. I'm to go yeah. old school. I'm going to pull out some Egyptian musk. Go to a lady like, hey, yeah, hey, girl. you are you like how I smell. Anyway, we got a guest here. Are oh, you talking about Egyptian musk? I was about to get real silly too. I had to, <laughs> I had to, come, I had to come up out of it. What's up, lady? Hi, Jamaica L. Davis. <laughs> Hello, how you hey, doing? Hey, we're great. How are you? I'm great, and I'm so honored to be here. Thank y'all so much for allowing me on. We happy you here. Thank you. So tell everybody who you are. And why you heal? My name is Jamika Davis, and I am a seven-year breast cancer survivor. And I told it's Breast that. Cancer Awareness Month, so I have yeah. a little pink breast cancer shirt and all my pink gear. Love it. Yes. And, well. and we met at the Peachtree Village Festival. Um, Trebel introduced us, so we got a, that connection. Yes. And um, Stacy, Stacy Randall, Stacy Randall, yes. yeah, Stacy Randall. Thanks for the and, collaboration. And um, absolutely. And uh, I was talking to her, and she has a company called Butterfly Effects. Yes, ma'am. So, what coach. is that? Butterfly Effects is a life coaching, and I just recently added mentoring to it. Okay. It was a life coaching um, thing that I came up with because, as a survivor, so many people helped me. And when I got a chance to give back, I said I wanted to do life coaching. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people hear life coaching, and they think, "Oh, I don't need any help. I don't need." But life coaching is the facilitation of growth and change, mm -hmm. and it's where you want to do something different in your life and you want to grow with it right you know it's like riding a bicycle if you don't know how and somebody's behind you kind of leading the way and helping you to ride your bicycle and then in a, in a few minutes they'll pull back and give you the opportunity to pedal but they're still standing there in the gap if you need them mm -hmm. and that's basically what life coaching is and I added mentoring because I'm a school teacher and mm -hmm. I had so many parents wanting 
life coaching for their kids. Well, they have right. so much life still to live. So mm. I decided to add mentoring in April when I had to do my um, renewal of my license. I started, I put mentoring to it too. And then mentoring is also a part of what I'm doing. I'm in a dissertation stage of a doctorate and my doctorate is on mentoring. So I added it together. Got you. Yes, ma'am. I noticed you have, you have several commas. Motivational, conflict resolution, spiritual, personal development. But I want to ask you about conflict resolution. I'm assuming this is something that you practice daily, being that you are a, a teacher. Yes. With you know, with a, a bunch of kids. What's the age ranges? What grade you teach? Well, I was the eighth grade middle school teacher for years, and this year I thought I was brave enough to go back to third. Okay. And I'm in third grade. <laughs> but I have brave actually enough. taught all ages. Um, Which is worse? Yes. Or well, no, hardest. Great. They're all great. Everybody has their own different personalities. Yeah. Eighth graders, they don't require as much. Third graders require a lot, Not and they're attention. very attentive. Gotcha. They notice everything. Oh, you got different hair. Oh, you got different <laughs> nails. Oh, your nail broke. <laughs> oh, wow. Everything. Wow. Yeah. So the methods that you use to uh, to for conflict resolution between the third graders and the eighth graders, is it that much different? Or you basically can use the same tactics, if you will, or methods? You can use the t- same tactic, tactics, I'm sorry. It's just according to what the resolution is. You know, okay. but yeah, basically the same tactics. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Now tell everybody, um, I know you said you're a seven year survivor, correct? Yes. Seven ma'am. years. That's what's seven up. Years. So tell everybody what kind of cancer you had. Okay. I had a very rare breast cancer. There are 14 different kinds. And the kind of breast cancer that I had is called Paget's disease. And when you think of breast cancer, you think of a lump. Mine was not a lump. It was just a patch of dry skin that I ignored thinking it was eczema. Mm. And for months, I ignored it because I would stop using the lotions or stop using the detergents thinking that's what it was. Right. And it would go away. So it kind of masked eczema. So I kind of thought, oh, it's not really anything. And then after so many times of it going and coming back, I decided, you know what, let me go check this out. It was like, you know how your spirit just tell you some, something did not feel right. And when I went back, they did a very, like a little biopsy of the skin and it was breast cancer. Wow. It was in a very early stage. People say, how was it in a stage zero? It was starting to actually form and it was in a stage zero, but I still had to do seven um, weeks of radiation, which was 35 rounds. I still had to have a lumpectomy where they had to actually cut to make sure that it didn't go in. Um, And I still was on a chemo pill for five years. And in the midst of that, I was still a school teacher. So I did not want to stop teaching at that time because we were right in the middle of testing. So I just went to work every day and I did my radiation after school. And luckily, my radiation started leading towards the summer. So I was off for the summer to kind of regroup and recuperate. But it's very rare. And like I said, people, you can't pick it up on a mammogram or an ultrasound. And I had Mm -hmm. just had one in October and everything was clear. By February, I had breast cancer. Mm. I did not know there was 14 different types of breast I didn't have no idea. And men get I just it too. learned something. Men get breast cancer. We had yeah, a guy they do. speaking just, at our uh, uh-huh. event about a month ago, and he had breast cancer. So, yes. Wow. 14 different. So, wow. you know, and I was asking earlier how did, um, you know, family deal with, because they, they go through it with you as yes. well. You uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Because they got to take care of you, make sure you go to the doctor and all those different things. So, yes. it's like, um, I know your sister's here with you today. Mm-hmm. And who was your biggest supporter? Was it just? It was my family. I mean, all of my family were supportive um, and friends. Mm Because sometimes I would come out of radiation and look out there, and I had two or three teachers that came to radiation when I came out. Because I went after school, and they're like, "Where you going?" I put the kids on the bus and run and drive to Henry Medical, and I had my um, Henry Medical Oncology. And when I would come out, some days I would have people sitting. I'm like, "What y'all doing here?" (laughs) So it's family support, friend, and you gotta trust God. Yes, I tell everybody, you know, and I know everybody have their different beliefs, right. but I know this is what brought me through. Right. I know it is. Absolutely. Yes. So now you just doing living. Yes. Single. I got am. a man. Well, I have a friend. You got a friend. I have a friend. I and, um, you my smile when are, you say that, honey. I have a friend. Mm-hmm. And um, my children are older, so I'm watch. actually now trying to <laughs> enjoy my life. Watch. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy. Enjoy. Yes. Enjoy. My enjoy. youngest son is a third year college student. He's 20 and my oldest is 25 and those are my bodyguards, but I still have a friend. So, <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. Enjoy life, honey. That's what's up. Yeah, yes. so oh, no, never mind. <laughs> I ain't going to say that on the air. Well, tell everybody um, where they can find you and 
and uh, follow you since you ain't got Facebook. Uh, oh my Facebook God! Now. I have an Instagram. It's Butterfly Fix LLC, uh, and also email Butterfly Fix Life Coaching at Gmail dot com. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you for having we me. We so appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Y'all have a good one. Okay. Thank Hold you. on. They're gonna break us out. Okay. All right, y'all. We're gonna come right back. We're gonna get into the he said she said. I think we got one more guest though. One more guest. Okay. One yes. more guest thank before you. the he we said do. she said. Hold on, hold on. We gonna wait till we break out. Okay. Okay. She we're gonna. Like she ready to go. Hold on. I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. We'll be right back, you guys, with industry with Tina B. Yeah, Mr. Howley, what up, Joe? Yeah, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Yeah. Mr. Ali, what up, Joe? And we are back. We are. And that was Rendezvous Event Hall video. You see that? You yes. see that peach cobbler, though? I don't you eat peach cobbler. You got my attention for a minute. I don't, I don't, I don't eat sweets. What? What is wrong with I don't, you? I don't do peach cobbler. <laughs> you do yoga and all that, but you don't do peach cobbler. I'm hey, done. I'm so done. Tell you got to stretch it out now. I don't need all those sweets. You know what? You got to have some peach cobbler. I, I just Ooh, can't. I can't do this. so sweets. good. It's just, yeah. Okay, we got another guest in the house. Peach cobbler make you feel like that. Tell me, I lost it for a second. I love oh, peach cobbler. Inbox her some peach cobbler. Never mind. We'll get to that later. <laughs> What's up, Tiffany? Hi. <laughs> hey, <laughs> she Nope. <laughs> but, but wait till you hear what she do. What do you what do, do lady? You ain't tell me. Um, I'm a private bartender. <laughs> See? And oh. um, I make jello shots, um, different punches. Hennessy cupcakes, Hennessy cakes, anything liquor and sweets, pretty much. You need that for the party. Do you know I was sitting here thinking thinking that? that? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been a private bartender? For two years. For two years. Okay. Two years. Is it something you always wanted to do? Really? Yeah. I just decided. um, I started doing it before I got my bartender license, but I just. I make drinks for everybody and we have family functions. So I was like, I always thought that I had to have a license to be a bartender. I didn't know that I didn't actually have to have one, but oh, I, I went to bartender that. school and got a license and I got it in bartending and mixology. So I just do different stuff. Cool. And I know you make jello shots. Mm-hmm. She was going to mm-hmm. try to bring some tonight. She didn't get a chance. Yeah, right? I didn't. I'm sorry. I was out. What? <laughs> yeah, she was gonna bring out, something tonight. Like, she didn't get a chance. You had to come she out. She was running. Yeah, she was running. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know who we are now. Yes. Yeah. So anytime, anytime, any Tuesday. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Next, if I'm him. not at work, I don't drink, but him. He I'm gonna need. I may be needing bartender for an event in my house, so I'm. Uh, I'm gonna need to have to test your product. Yeah. Okay. You have card or anything? Um, I don't. I just okay. had to order some more, but I can. I, I can send it to you. Um. Do your email. Okay. Okay. No problem. No problem. So now, what did you do before that? 
I actually worked in a I worked in the plant for about three years. Oh, okay. And I got my. It's funny because I hurt myself. Um, I hurt my wrist at work, so I was off work and I was getting work Miss Coffin stuff. And I was like, I don't want to go back. Like I hurt myself one time, and I just don't want to break myself down. Mm-hmm. So I just start researching it, and I was just like, I know I don't have the money to do this, but I just. Went for it. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. Sometimes you just got to jump and yep. see where it goes, yeah. and it's working itself out for you. Right? It is. It's Tiffany Treats. What's it name? Tipsy Treats. Tipsy Treats. <laughs> Tiffany Tipsy Treats. <laughs> Do you have a location, or are you just um, not right mobile. now? Yeah. Mobile. mobile. Okay. Yeah. Just, um, I'll give my information. Um, yeah. You can call. I have. You can call, text, or email me um, about different events, or if you just want something, if you're hosting something, if you don't need a bartender per se like I make I have all kind of packages like it goes from lollipops to candy shot glasses to daiquiris and bottles so I mean that's hmm. whatever you need basically. and then you said they like cakes and cupcakes as well right mm-hmm. with the shots so all you hear was the sweets so will you eat uh, a cupcake with, with Hennessy in it me yes no that's alcohol <laughs> <laughs> But they don't like drown. You don't drown it in alcohol. You can't I even know. taste it. I mean, you you can taste it. I'm you can't. Say, yeah, I mean, say you can't. Taste and if you don't water. drink, you really a taste. It. So yeah. come on, you may not can taste it because you probably pop out twins. First off, I don't eat cupcakes. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's Do that one time. <laughs> Do that one. <laughs> oh, so tell me about what they, you tell me about when they can find you again. Um, well, Facebook right now, my business page isn't up. It's being worked on. So okay. you can find me. My name is Tiffany Long. And um, on can, Facebook? Yeah, that's on okay. Facebook. And you can email me at Tiffany's Brand 2018 at gmail.com. Or um, if you look on my page, I have my phone numbers on there for you to book me or whatever you need okay cool beans that's what's up see that didn't hurt tiffany she came yeah, in here like what they gonna do what y'all gonna ask me i mean yeah. i just need to know i just i know i, I, I feel know a little bit i feel you i feel you and shout out to um um paula who hooked this connection up yes yeah, so thank you she's here oh is she, she is. oh she need to come in here hey, paula. shout out to paula for the this connection up i appreciate yeah <laughs> paula real shy I appreciate you hooking this connection up as well because we're going to get you some work, girl. Thank you. This is all about networking and advertising, mm-hmm. and everybody needs a bartender. I don't uh, know what you do. Oh, uh, yeah. And what kind of party, <laughs> event, Christmas party, whatever. Everybody needs a yeah, bartender. Are this you? is the season, too. Yeah. This is really the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of weddings, family get ready to go. Tailgating parties, weddings, bachelorette parties. <laughs> a lot of stuff, so. Now, let me ask you are you willing to go into a club, too? I am. I was looking like I like I'm New Year's to Atlanta. I've only been here for about six months. So oh yeah, you real new. Yeah. In the street with Tina B. Miss Tyler, what up, bro? Hey, what's going on? It's Lisa K with Eat and Drink with me. Hey, Lisa, give me one second. What up, Lisa? Okay, well, thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> no problem. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Lisa K. All right, Lisa K. What's up, girlie? What's going on, folks? It's your girl, Nisa Cave. Even drink with me. And today's dining review is a soul food spot that I found um, downtown Atlanta. It's called Sisters of the New South. Um, like I said, it's a soul food restaurant. It's located at 27 Piedmont Avenue, northeast, literally right in between Edgewood and Auburn um, on Piedmont, in the heart of one of my alma maters, which is Georgia State University. So they have plenty of food specials for college students, but plenty of food specials, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for everyone. Um, what I ended up eating over there they had a two-piece special that day. Um, what was I listening to? 87.7 with uh, Portia Fox had a special going on where you could get a meal for, uh, believe it or not, a dollar eighty-seven cents. Oh, wow. And it was two-piece um, chicken, and you get two sides and cornbread. So I had some uh, dark meat chicken, some sweet potatoes, and some cabbage. 
Ooh, and some sweet corn. Is that what it makes you do? And then, uh, <laughs> wow. A drink doesn't didn't come with it, but I they did an um, Arnold Palmer for me, which is you know half lemonade, half tea, which is really good. Everything was really good. The way that their uh, restaurant is, is set up, like your old school uh, kind of cafeteria style, where you walk in and you get served. They serve the meat on your on the plate or the food on the plate, and um, you kind of go down the line and pay for it at the end. And they have plenty of seating. They have plenty of outlets if you are somebody that just wants to go and sit down and do some work or whatever, just kind of hang out. Um, plenty of space in there. And um, the only thing that is a little lacking, I will say, is the parking because they're right next door to a couple of other eateries and they have, and it's in a building that has, that's attached to a um, residential spot or some condos. So the parking is a little limited, um, but there's other parking, street parking and other parking lots around that whole area that you could easily just park and walk over to. Um, but like I said, everything was really good. I, on the eatery scale, my eatery scale is, is one to ten. One being awful, five being acceptable, and ten being awesome. I gave the middle a ten. Oh, everything wow. was really, really good. Um, wow. They have their campus here in Atlanta, and they also have um, a location in Savannah. So if you go to their website, which is the sisters of the new south dot com, you'll be able to see the menu for both. And if there's anybody out there that you're looking to invest into any franchise opportunities, they have that available as well. Um, you can go to all their social medias is Sisters of the New South, so that's Facebook, um, Instagram and Twitter. And if you don't feel like driving to go over there to get your food, you can get it delivered through Uber Eats and DoorDash. The way that I was introduced to it initially is I used to do Uber Eats, and I picked up a meal um, from there for somebody and delivered, so I decided to go back um, at another time, which I did. So hey. if you're looking for a meal you don't feel like cooking, but you want something that's close to home cooking, yeah. Head over to downtown Atlanta, which is of the New South, 27 Piedmont Avenue, Northeast, Atlanta, GA. Cool, beans. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, oh. Nisha, I think I can speak on behalf of everybody that's in here. When they had that one dollar and eighty seven cent special, can you blast that on Facebook? Please? Okay. And she kept that to herself, did she? You're so selfish. <laughs> Man, you ain't telling I'm nobody. Definitely. And me gonna give it a 10. Right. You know what? And the food goes with a dollar and eighty seven cents. Just hang up on you. Uh, don't hang up on me. <laughs> give us your email, um, your yeah, um information right quick. So my email address um, is eat and drink with me at gmail dot com. Uh, my social media is all eat and drink with me, and that's e a t a n d r i n k w i t h m e. And hit me up if you want me to go somewhere and check something out and review it for you. I will definitely do that. Um, this is the last week that I'm celebrating my five year anniversary of Even Drink With Me. So I do have another giveaway coming up. Um, it'll be probably later on this week, but somebody's going to get something really nice. All right. So we'll have that for y'all next Tuesday. So thank you, Nisa, for calling in. We Appreciate will talk you. to you later. All right. As always, happy dining. All right. Have a good night. Okay, thanks again for being on the show, Tiffany. We really appreciate you. you. That's All right, we're going to go out. Go one second. All right, send the street with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up, Joe? And we'll be right back with the He Said, She Said relationship segment. Yeah. Best part of the show we Are love. And we got the beautiful team Marie with us. Going to come up here. So, y'all stay tuned. Uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hi, my name is Tina B with the Lingdale Agency, TLA. It's an agency for men and women ages 40 and over. And this is your opportunity to be a part of this amazing agency. Teach runway class where we teach them different turns, um, how to walk, straight walk, couture walk, and I have classes.
once a month or every other month, depending on the venue. And it's Kayvon Hill, and I am with TLA, Ages Beauties Over 40. What I like most about TLA is the acting part of it, that we get the opportunity to be able to get out there and be seen and be able to network with all kinds of people here in the ATL and abroad. I hope that you too will want to join TLA. Tina Bridges is the best. I have models, I have artists, I have uh, medias and poets. I have a magazine called Vogue Ageless Beauty Magazine, and we also do runway, red carpet events, hosts, and so much more. So you want to be a part of this agency, email me, ababtlb at gmail.com or Instagram at tlamgmt. Stay working. All right, you guys, it's in the street with Tina B. Mr. Ali, what up? And we Yo. are back. I'm statusnetwork.net. Yes. And we have another special guest in the house with us. You pull in my microphone. We do. Uh, we do. Introduce yourself. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, T. Marie. How y'all doing today? <laughs> How y'all doing today? We're uh, doing wonderful, I'm honey. Groovy. It's your favorite relationship advocate. Yes. I love relationships. I love yes. Stuff. I love <laughs> Helping men understand what they need to be doing, making women accountable for what they need to be doing. Yes, that's the whole point. And my movement, no more boyfriends, should not offend men. I just, I just say that it does right. offend them, but you know, we'll talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Now I saw you on Facebook. The reason why I reached out. I mean, we, we been. <laughs> Everybody scared of what up though. I'm here to about you. D D A T L. But um, we um, yeah, I saw your show on on Facebook, and we we connected a while back. You came on my old show back. Yes, I agree with you a couple times. You have a great hat. I understand what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, I was in the mood. So um, now you got the no boyfriends. I love yes. that. I love that. Yes. So tell me about what does that mean when you say that? So listen, no more boyfriends is not a man bashing movement because that's what people think in the beginning. Is no more boyfriends. Mm -hmm. Actually, no more boyfriends is about purpose driven dating. So it's about not settling into this boyfriend girlfriend role because what happens is when women get into that girlfriend mode, they actually turn that mode into wife mode. So they start doing wife things, acting like a wife, being accountable like a wife without having the benefits of becoming what a wife is. Mm -hmm. There are roles and stages to everything that you do. So women should understand to play their role and allow the man to play their role and don't get into this role prior to becoming that wife. I don't want to hear that about I need to test the water. I want to be a wife. Yeah. No, that's, no, that's not necessary. You test the water when you find out who I am, what I'm about. You don't test the water by getting those actions that you haven't earned yet. So that's what it's about. <laughs> for those of you who are watching, <laughs> you have any questions or comments for us? Seven zero two five one four seven zero seven. We do this each and every Tuesday yeah. at seven o'clock. We start a little bit late today. Yeah, we'll from six to it. eight, but we're gonna go a little bit later tonight as well. So awesome. we're getting into it. It's called "He Said, She Said." Love it. Um, when you first said uh, "No More Boyfriends," mm -hmm. I didn't think of it the way most men would think of it. So I knew. Okay, this is not something typical. Right. So, uh, but then again, I have a different type of thought process. Right. So I, I understand. That. Yeah. I understand that concept. I get that too. The title was to catch everybody because when you hear it, people are like, "Whoa, I need to understand." What are you talking about? What do you mean? And so I did the title, and I'm gonna tell you, it actually came from my own life experience. Me taking that same role, doing the same thing, becoming a, a wife and a girlfriend situation and a lot of women do that we can't help it because we're naturally nurturers, nurturers. yes ma'am soon as we take on something we take care of it like it's our own yes. and we expect the same results and what i'm telling women is just to be careful you can nurture this thing but make sure this is something that you're nurturing that actually wants the same results because you get into this thing and you start doing all this stuff and you're giving yourself away and doing all this and you don't understand why the guy is not you know, falling in love and falling in line because you give it your best. But the whole thing is you got to find out if what you're giving is actually what that man actually needs. Mm -hmm. You got to find out if you can actually give that man what he needs. And it may not be who you are. 
So he'll take all the free stuff, believe me. He'll let you cook and clean and hook them up and do all that stuff. He'll let you do that until he finds the right one. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, how do you know who is there for potential or who's there just to accept and free stuff? Right. And a lot of it starts with questions and paying attention. We ignore actions. We, because we want what we want. We see a person, we're like, you know what? I like him. I see his potential. Mm -hmm. I see what he could be. And I see what we could be together without mm -hmm. getting all the information or ignoring the red flags. Yeah. We all look and we see what we know we don't want to do or want to be with, but we keep with it because we're hoping we're so special that we can adjust it. Right. Ma'am, you're not that special. Right. You're not. You're not that no, special not for a person us are. who wants, right, who wants something different than who you are. Right. Yeah. Because a lot of times you'll get with somebody and you're like, well, I do all this. Mm -hmm. What is it? You know, but it's still not. It was this guy at um, why, um, why Settle Mixer. Mm -hmm. um, and he said, every man has his own king inside. So it's like he. You can't when when you see him with somebody, you ask why her. You know, he'd be like, he don't even know. Right. He can't really tell you why her. He just knows it when he sees it or when he feels it. Right. So it's nothing that you can do to make him see you. He just have to see you. You know, because a lot of times as women, we try to say, okay, let me cook, let me write. You know, let me mm -hmm. have the best sex in the world. Right. Let me do this. Let me right. do all these things, and he still don't see you. And you're trying to figure out why. Because he's not connected with you in that way. And no matter, like, again, he, he may not be able to verbalize or know how to verbalize what it is that he wants, but he knows what he wants. And whatever that is, you're not that. Mm -hmm. I did a, um, a video yesterday called It's Okay to Be the Wrong One. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times we think we're so special and what we do is so special that we are the right one, but you're not. You're the wrong one for that situation. That situation. And it's okay for you to be the wrong one. Find you a situation where you can be the right one for the right person. Right. So don't think because you're special, you get all caught up. Oh, my God, I know I was this, I was that. And, that, and you probably are amazing. Mm -hmm. But if this man does not see you or does not want the things that you are given, it doesn't matter how amazing you're going to be. You're not for that person. So right. quit pushing yourself on that situation. Right. Find you somebody who loves that amazing person that you are. Right. Yeah. So, guy. <laughs> really that like uh, yeah, no. <laughs> and then y'all just say guy oh. so what, what's your question <laughs> <laughs> no what's your question no, no, how well, you, I mean how do you feel about yeah. that is that true I mean do I'm sure you see a lot of women that may do a lot of good things for you and, and, and be there for you but you still don't connect with them to be in a relationship why Hmm. Did you have to breathe? Yeah, you said that. Though? No, <laughs> because because I mean, you you, you said a, a lot right there. And as I listen to what you said, the one thing that that neither one of you said that uh, the men may not do from the beginning is, and we talk about this all the time, is be honest. Mm -hmm. But as I say <laughs> all of the time, we have to be honest with ourselves first right so if we be honest with ourselves and we know this woman is looking for something then we shouldn't let her come and clean your house mm -hmm. and wash your clothes you should don't let her do that right if you know that's not what you want so i'm gonna slide this in okay. to, the, to, the, to the right <laughs> because you made a point when you said something about you know, don't be giving the man, uh, uh, don't be doing wife duties That's if he's not, uh, if you're right. not the wife. Right. And, you know, I've learned that all women don't want to be married. They, they don't, they don't want to be married contrary to popular belief. And a lot of us men, you should think like all women want to get married. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the case. Some women don't want that, but yet are still okay with doing those wife duties if the energy she's putting out mm -hmm. she's getting it in return and she's receiving those things. so if she's receiving it in return and she doesn't want to get married what is that so she she'd be like 
No, no more boyfriend. No. Tell me how that works. So that's really, and so this is what I talk about. It, it goes back to knowing what you want from the beginning. I'm not saying everybody wants to be a wife. I'm saying knowing what it is that you want. Right. So if you don't want to be a wife and you're okay with that, then that's fine. I'm not even talking to you. But for most people who do, because I'm talking to people, I'm, again, I'm dealing with purpose driven dating. If you want that and you know this person can't give it to you, then don't continue to put yourself in that situation and then be upset. Well, that's the part I'm talking out. about. Be upset because you've given all that away. Yeah. So for the woman who doesn't want that and is okay with allowing those things to happen, that's perfectly fine. I'm yeah. not the one to tell you what to do in your space and how to do it. Right. What I'm saying is if that's not the end result that you want and you're going to continue to be upset about not getting what you want, then you have to check yourself first. See, I understand that men, that women want to blame men. And, and, and I get it. You know, you want to blame that man, but I deal with accountability first. Right. I deal with women being accountable for what they choose, what situation they choose to be in, who they choose to put their energy into because it really is up to me to decide if I want to continue with that. And when you say men don't necessarily tell the truth, their body language and their actions do tell the truth. Yeah. Their, their actions will tell the truth. We just will ignore what that truth is because your mouth will say something totally different than your actions do. Mm-hmm. Because but I, a lot of time they can go either way though, because their mouth will say, I don't want anything and their actions are saying differently. So you have to read what their actions are. If they don't want anything and they say they don't want anything, they don't want anything. But if their actions are, they will bring you into their space. They're going to get from you what they want from you. You know what I'm saying? See, that's, then that's that's that game plan. Then that's that. It may be plan that, with somebody feeling. So guess what you need to do? You need to check away. that. You need to check that. Well, it, again, we. I, we 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 did this before. And if, <laughs> if if a man is clearly saying, "I am not looking for a relationship. I am dating. I'm right. living my best life." Right, 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 right. A woman, and I say this all the time: a woman is in control because she then chooses. How do I deal with this man? Absolutely. There are levels. A woman has different levels that she would deal with a man. It could be. Friends, just associates, if she want to talk to him every so often. But if he's telling her that, again, I always say this. A lot of times, men, we don't know what we want, but we know what we don't want. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So if she's listening, didn't need my favorite word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she makes the choice mm-hmm. how she should proceed with this mm-hmm. man, even if there is an uh, attraction. Right. She may have to say, you know what? I need to stay away from this dude because right. I'm feeling him. So I still put the onus on us. I'm all up. About men, us holding each other accountable. I love that. So I can't, I, I can't give advice to women. I can't do all that. <laughs> all I can suggest women do is listen. Mm-hmm. So it's for me, it's about us holding ourselves accountable. And I always say it all the time. I'm gonna tell the truth. It ain't for the woman. It's for me. It's for you. But the thing is, with when, when men say, you know, hey, I don't want anything, but then like I said, they show a different action. And for you to say, like last week or a couple of weeks ago, you were saying, far as you treat a woman this way, what what I supposed to do? Treat them bad, you know? But if you're dating, if you're dating different women and you treat all these women the same, you cannot. Listen, let me look at the camera when I say. Okay, this. Not, let me hear you. I'm listening. To if a man is dating a bunch of women, it is not possible for him to treat everyone the same because. We don't have the mental capacity to treat five <laughs> women that we're dating the same. It doesn't work that way. Right. I'm looking at the camera so y'all can see. <laughs> it isn't possible. Any man who says that, you're lying. You cannot treat all five the same if you're dating five women. It is not. You cannot. You probably ain't even going to have the energy. Right. F- five? <laughs> five? <laughs> and where are your coins at trying to date five people? That's a whole yeah, nother thing. Yeah, that's, it gets real expensive. Can I talk about money and dating? Yeah, that, that, that gets real expensive. I do have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Ladies, ladies, ladies. <laughs> oh, ladies. yeah, here we go. Yeah. Ladies, ladies, I have a question. Okay. <clears throat> if you are married mm-hmm. and your husband says to you, hey, I'm going to give you a pass once a year. To go out and have sex with somebody because I think it'll spice up our marriage. It will heat things up. Would you be gang to do that? I'm going to repeat that for the people in the back. You are married and your husband says, baby, you know what? I want to heat up the marriage. One time a year, you can go out and you can have sex with somebody because I think 
it'll heat things up just for us to do something different. All he's all he did is give you a pass. You ain't ain't none about giving him a pass. He giving you one pass one time a year. Do you accept that pass? Excuse me, I'm gonna start with the young lady over here to my left. She don't have a mic though. <laughs> just not not just hear yes or no. Okay, so she. But my she thing said is. No. I- <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, wait. All he said one one time a year, has sex with one person one time. No. Okay. No. Okay. If, no, I mean it. What's the point? I'm trying to figure out the point. The whole point was he feels like it will spice up the marriage. Then he go out you, there. I don't want to go sleep. He ain't going, but I ain't going. I, I, I want to go. If we can't afford to sleep, you'll say no. No, I wouldn't. What make you think I want to go sleep? First of all, what make you think? No, no, I'm just saying. What make you think? What is that? What's the point of that? What what make him think that? I guess he needs to spice up the. um, What does he need? Right, it doesn't even matter. It's not supposed to make sense to y'all. It is if I'm involved. This is a man's talk, Parker. All he's saying to you is, "Hey." I think it is spice things up a little bit. Okay, I'll just time. what I'll do is just go away for the weekend <laughs> and tell him, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah," and come back home. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, daddy, yeah. Right, and then come back home. I just want to know what man would actually accept me coming back from underneath another man, not knowing what I've done, what he's done to me, what I put my mouth on, what he did to me. How? What man is going to accept me coming cool. back? And right. how is that going to spice up and our relationship? Right? Are you wondering what happened that week? Right. I just want to. It know. just seemed like. So this is my interpretation of that scenario. No. If you come back and you tell him about the experience. Maybe that may be a turn on for him. He's not seeing it, but he's hearing about it. Thus, him saying it may spice things up. Oh, sad, I'm man. just giving you an attention. He need to watch porn. Yeah, he need to watch porn. Let's put it on porn. I just thought I'd ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought I'd ask that question. But wait. I have okay, let's just go. Now, on Red Talk, <laughs> with Jada, it's like Will. They talked about um, mm-hmm. their relationship. They're not, they don't consider themselves married anymore. Mm-hmm. They just consider themselves a life partner partnership mm-hmm. which um kind of makes sense to me because when you put titles on things things start to change and for the simple fact that when it becomes because like when you dating somebody it's all fun da, 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 da. as soon as you say we're relationship it's like so who is that who are you talking to where are you going what did you know all these questions come about when it was fine last week you know what i'm saying but as soon as you say we're together now Everything starts to change. It's like, why can't just be a life partnership where we're enjoying each other? It's free. It's open. It's not so much as you can go sleep with somebody, but it's just a matter of just being. <laughs> Did you see the way he Right, right, right. I don't even want to just say that. Right. 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 We're committed now. First, I didn't have the right to ask you certain things or do certain things because we wasn't in the committed relationship right. and vice versa. Now that uh, we just signed Let me tell you, if you're sleeping, that, if you're sleeping with somebody, you have the right to ask no, whatever you, you want. That you don't. absolutely do not. Yes, and that, yes and you do. That, you should do. That's the misconception. If I'm sweat with you, then I can ask you whatever I want to ask you. That is a choice that you made prior to the commitment. That does not obligate you to know anything or have anything to do with you. If you have a beat <laughs> I do because I mean I, 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 I agree with you. I remember yeah. Tina said that on another show I wanted. <laughs> If, you said if, your mama told you. My mama somebody? said if you can lay with them, you can ask them whatever you want to ask them. That's not true. And and I believe that. It's not true. And that's what gets us in trouble because we do think once we slept with someone that there's an obligation. It's and it's and that's not so much as an obligation, but it's just a matter of respect. And if I'm spending if I'm spending time with you and I'm giving you my bar. That was a choice that you made. <laughs> then I should be able to. <laughs> I should be able to ask whatever I want to ask, and it shouldn't be an issue 
If I have to ask, it, it's a way you do everything. Mm -hmm. Even in a committed relationship, you shouldn't go down my throat with questions. You know what I'm saying? So even if, in a relationship, committed or not committed, if I want to ask a question, I don't see what the problem is. You can ask a question, but you can't obligate me to answer anything that has to do okay. with anything. Okay. Well, in a committed relationship, what changes in the committed okay, because, because we're committed. When you say committed, you have committed to the idea that this is what we're going to do. That's the difference in between co commitment and not being committed. So with that, with that commitment, with that title comes expectation. Absolutely. And with expectation, as you said, is the mother of disappointment. Yes, it is. There's something that mentally happens mm. when people decide, and this is my opinion, to say we are together. Yeah. It's almost like people be together for years and then they get married, then they you divorce a year later. Yeah. Because what changed? Mentally, something changed because now we have this title when everything was fine. Right. I personally don't want a woman to be committed to me. I want her to be able to do whatever she wants to do. And what we have is what we have. I don't feel like I need to have a woman committed to me where I have to ask her a bunch of questions where she has to answer to me. But that's not what committed is. And that's the problem. Commitment is you've gotten it mixed up. That's not the definition of commitment. Commitment does not mean I have to track your every move or know your everything or do whatever. Commitment means if I'm away from you, I know that I don't have to worry about what you're doing and I don't have to ask you because you have made a decision to be faithful and truthful to me. So I don't have to I think, ask you those I think questions. the definition of commitment in a relationship varies from person to person. Uh, I, I think I think every I think it's levels uh, to, to all of it. And and that's where it starts. Everybody needs to know from the beginning what each other wants and their expectations. And and I think the thing that that whole conversation that they had, and I watched it three times, mm -hmm. and I was, I mean, I was listening to Jada, but I was listening to Will, and it resonated with me. And he said something to me that I felt in my soul because I've done that when he said at the point where they were hurt, he was acting like an insecure boy because he was broken mm -hmm. he said we're all broken and i remember the point where i was broken mm -hmm. in 14 i was acting like an insecure boy mm -hmm. and he said he had to go away be alone and find himself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and once he identified he was being an insecure boy then you go away alone and you had that time of yourself you learn and you find yourself and then you you grow mm -hmm. and i like what he said because that's kind of the, that's the space that I'm in. Like, I know that I've grown. Like, I know where I've messed up at. Mm -hmm. And to see him admit that, I was like, okay. Because men ain't going to be walking out here talking about I was acting like an insecure right, boy right. in front of a bunch of people. And I was like, that's how I was acting. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we have a dialogue to where it's you know, mature without being crap. Right. So I'm saying that, you know, I have to say that because the baby over there. Oh, yep. <laughs> My baby. And the thing is, we all have to, we have to know where we are before we even start talking about relationships. We have to know if we're even ready for a relationship. And a lot of times we don't even know that. We don't know what our limits are. We don't know if we're ready. We don't know if we're willing to uh, give this person what they have. We don't even know if we're even capable of doing that. And those are the things you have to find out prior to even pursuing a relationship or saying, hey, I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm just looking for someone to enjoy right now. Right. So and, and that's OK. I don't want people to think this because I'm talking about purpose driven dating and everybody has to be in a relationship because that doesn't work for everyone. Right. But there is. A place now that people who want to date on purpose feel as if they are outnumbered by people who just want to be casual. And there's a and there are people who really want to date for the purpose of having you know a family, you know kids, relationship, and and bringing that up in that in in the in that realm of a wholeness. If you will. Yeah. But that doesn't necessarily mean there's no place for people to just casually date and enjoy each other either. Just know that's what true. The but I feel is. like I feel as if if you. It should be leading to something. Yeah. I, I feel that if it you should, choose if you, to. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like it should be leading to something instead of just sleeping around. Right. Right. You know what I mean? It's like not to say that dating. Now, that's a question I want to oh, ask yeah. because a lot of people think if you date multiple mm. people, you're, you're sleeping, sleeping with all the people yeah. and you're not. You, you're you just dating. And I you always know? advise people in the dating phase, dude, that's not the time that you're supposed to be sleeping with anyone. 
while you're dating. While you're dating, have you decided that? I hey, can I see wanna... why you would say that. Yeah, I'm because sorry. that's when you're supposed to be trying saying. to get to know someone, especially that. you know if you're talking about I'm about to give my body. If your body is of some value, why would you just give it to anybody? I'm, right. Again, I'm not talking about being married or even committed. I'm talking about giving your body to someone who appreciates who you are right. and appreciates your body. So why would you do that in a dating phase? You should get to know if that person even appreciates what you want to give them. Right. I, I think one of the things that, that kind of that baffles me and makes me laugh is that people will say, well, you're too old to be doing this. <laughs> or you want to be lonely the rest of your life. It's like they everybody has their own uh, thought process and what they think dating should be and what people mm-hmm. should be doing but everybody has different thought processes i can assure you someone who has been married and divorced is not gonna have the same thought process oh, about relationship as somebody who's never been married absolutely, before right. it is impossible to think like that so i don't think if a person man or a woman dates multiple people i don't think any less of them if a woman chooses to have uh, sex with who, whoever she want to have sex with i don't think she's a whore i think somebody posed that question I did. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the other day mm-hmm. I, I just don't agree with the with the double standards. If a man is going to do it and not be called a whore, a woman shouldn't be either. Well, that's but that's the question. That's why I posted the question mm-hmm. because someone did call the man a whore, and I said, "But he's single, mm-hmm. so he can date who he want to date." And, you know and, what I mean? It shouldn't, too, it shouldn't it shouldn't be named a whore because he's sleeping. I mean, not right. sleeping around but because he's you know talking to different women, right. trying to holler at different women. He shouldn't be considered a whore because of that. Yep. So I was just wondering. Why do people consider that's a people choice. that date right. multiple that's, people that's, that's, as that's people put, yeah, yeah, put dating and sex together? Yeah, that's the yeah. first thing. Right. Uh, so if I'm going out with John, I'm going out with Rick, and I'm going out with Mark, I'm obviously I'm sleeping with all three of them. I'm not just going bowling or going to eat or going to hang. Right. I gotta be in sleeping bed with, with them because right. I'm dating them, and that's just not true. Right. I might be sleeping with Mark, but not doing nothing with the, the other two. two. Right. I might not be doing anything with any of either way. It's my choice Mm -hmm. and I have to be okay with my choices. And that's all I'm saying. Be okay with whatever you've chosen to do. Right. And do that and do that. And don't let who you're dating dictate your choice because that's another thing we do. Well, he wanted this, but did you want that? Mm -hmm. If that's not what you want to do, you can't even put that on because he touched on you and felt you and got you hot. She'll be like, oh, oh, I got to go, honey, because I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. I know what I ain't trying to do, and I right. know I get warm with people around here. Right. So let me go. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Right, because y'all women just be so aggressive, <laughs> trying to jump out of the trying to go home and read Bible verses and, and all of that, and y'all be like, you give it here. <laughs> you ought to give me some. And we trying to go home and read yeah, I know. Corinthians. I know. I know. I know. I know. Stop objectifying us, gentlemen. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. In 2019. <laughs> okay. 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 We can't even wear jogging. Never mind. Right. You know, right. jogging right. yeah. down somewhere. <laughs> yes. Are you jogging down <laughs> Yeah, right. you know. <laughs> <laughs> you see that? I'm just saying. So, Nate, what's one of your questions on there? You said you had like 14 uh, I, I, points. I, I, so, <laughs> something else that uh, he said, he said he learned that love to many is not unconditional. Love is transactional until you do something wrong or that I don't like. Mm. So unconditional love would be to love someone even though right. they did something you didn't like yeah. but you still wake up the next day and get him a high five. Absolutely. So my analytical mind, I'm like, wow. Am I able to love somebody unconditional? Right. Like, he got me questioning my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Again, like I, it's rare that I've seen a man be that honest. Right. So it resonated with me. I, I had a whole list of stuff right, right here. Like a but I mean, that's and like even in a you know in a marriage, like he said, he would never get a divorce. She was like, you can be in the room down down the hall mm-hmm. with somebody else. That woman go say that down the hall yeah. with somebody else. But we gonna be in this room. We gonna be in this family. No. That's yeah. a woman that has truly committed to her so unconditional love. Like <laughs> she loves that man, his friendship. But she friend. said, you could be down there with somebody else. And that's why that idea together. works for her because she can do the same thing. She has no problem with being like, I can do the same thing. That's why for a woman who would have an issue with that, she couldn't say that to her husband. But this lady is open to like, I can do it or you can do it. She's she's open to that that's idea. Real. And I looked at I looked yeah, at their yeah. situation and I was just like, 
that that's doable. Like I can understand where they coming from because like you said, you got to find out what do you really want? Right. Because it's, it's, it's in, bla- you know, emblazed in our mind that you're supposed to meet, get married, have kids, have a house, have a dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nothing says that we can live. You can live at your house. I can live in my house and still be married. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's nothing. It's, it can be so many different ways that commitment is. You have is to what learn I'm how, saying. What's the you best way for you to for coexist? You and right. that person, right? And that's what they were saying. It works for them. Mm-hmm. It may not work for your household, but it works for their household and their relationship. And like he said, they do Christmas, they do holidays, mm-hmm. they go on trips and different stuff like that. You know, they make it. It sound like they're not together, but at the same time. They're t- together. They probably found the a way to coexist outside of outgoing stages. You have yeah. to understand, you know, you've got to stage where you want to be all together. Yeah. You remember, you know how people stay married for so long and then they get to that stage where now they just, they have break up, they get that itch, whatever. <laughs> sure. They probably reached those stages in, in love, in their relationship, and they yeah. found a way to adjust without yeah. being breaking because up. Because you know you, you're saying? with someone every single mm-hmm. day. It's like it becomes a brother and sister situation. Absolutely. If you've been married, you know. It becomes a brother and sister. Yeah, it feels like brother and sister situation. But you be good and you want to keep partner. that yeah. spark going some kind of way. And, and that's what they both said. They said we had to break up within our marriage mm-hmm. just to get back together. And they say they there's nothing that they can't talk about. Right. Right. And for somebody like me that's a communicator, that's that's a different that's, type of freedom. Yes. Mm-hmm. When you can when you talk can just to talk. somebody like that, it can be about Women, men, it don't matter what it right. is. Yes. And that's rare that's, because everybody yeah. can't take that. Handle that. Internally. And Absolutely. that's what I demand in my relationship. And I, me too. Because like, I, I have, have to be friends. Because there's going to be yes. things we may not want to see each other, deal with each other. It's just, but the friendship will always, always remain. You know how you're always friends with your boy, with your girl? Yeah. If you have that that even within your relationship, yeah. then you will stay together. What yeah. happens in these marriages, they, they don't even have, have a lot of friendships to begin with. They yeah. have uh, rules and commitments and things I need you to do yeah. with no friendship. no friendship and that's why those marriages fall apart because mm-hmm. you don't have that friendship. and I say that all the time like you got to be friends mm-hmm. with someone because when when a person cheats on you or anything that's how you're able that's to how you feel like damn I'm mad mm-hmm. at you because you my friend right. like now who I'm gonna talk to who I'm gonna go eat with because I gotta be mad at right, you right, you know what I'm right. saying it but it, but you together. really want to just let's make up so we can go eat exactly. or whatever. And literally, that's what it is. Yes. And it's like you be more people to do that. And you have to understand within your marriage, within that commitment, that's what that commitment consists of. So when you say that, you also are saying, hey, even when you fuck up. Yes. I'm still love you. I still want to be. I might brush in the kneecap with this bag. Yes. But when I get through, I'm going to take you to the hospital. Go. We're going to get that fixed. We're going to eat. Right, you know, so you have and to learn. But you got to be friends. You gonna know. beat them and then go feed them. Absolutely, <laughs> that's the type of Read love. And feed that's them. the type of love I have for my. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm just beat saying. Them, I'm just saying. Them. I love this little meme where he's got the umbrella. He mad at her, but yeah, he's but he's still covering, covering her, her up, her. make sure the rain and don't get on her. And that is thing. so true. Whether so married true. or whatever, when you cover the per- you, when you love the person. That's how you know you love them when you cover them regardless. Regardless. The, the last two things that I had, the one of them was he said you have to be true uh, to who you are mm-hmm. uh, because we all change and we grow. But even in the midst of that, you still got to be true to who you are mm-hmm. and yeah. allow that other person to do the same. And right. I, I yeah. think that's where the love, loving somebody unconditional comes in. And finally, it's the, the compromise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Regardless of whatever choices you make, I may not like it. Mm-hmm. But I will still love you and be there for you. And I'm like, I get that. That is a whole new level of a grand to disagree with me. Yeah, because like she wanted, she didn't want marriage in the first place. She didn't want kids and all that type of stuff. All that just happened, happened. real quick. Mm-hmm. Six months within their, their relationship or whatever. So she down the aisle. She got kids. And she wanted to just be wild and free. Right. So when he when they came to that stage of their relationship, that's when you see her do the rock band. And mm-hmm. she's, you she's know, doing find, all this stuff. Find she's finding things. herself yeah, out because she was living through him. Right. Trying traveling with him. Will yeah. Smith, the yeah. actor, the yeah. movie star, and all that stuff. She didn't know who Jada was. Right. So now it's to the point where she can find herself. And, and I tell everybody that. Like, when you get out of a relationship, you need that time to find yourself right. before you 
invest in somebody else's problem. And you really need to do that prior to so that you can take that person that you love so much into the relationship and introduce your mate to that person that you love so much. So they don't know how to deal with that person and you don't have to throw that person away. Mm. You shouldn't have to throw away who you are to be in a relationship. No. That's a serious sacrifice. It and is. somebody you're gonna have regrets in the long run because you have to put away who you truly were just to be with this person and you're gonna resent them in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There'll be some resentment. Yeah. It was how they he described it as characters. Like you not being your true self. Mm-hmm. But you two characters are having a relationship instead of being who you really are you still being that person who you was in the beginning Mm -hmm. trying to maintain a relationship the whole time and it just doesn't work like that because i think he was trying to change her and wanted her to be what he wanted her to be and she was doing that for a while but it was something about her turning 40 and it just it just clicked woke up and i heard about that Mm -hmm. you know something switches changes in your mind when you before you turn 40 and I didn't believe it until six months before I turned 40 <laughs> right. and as I got into the quarter I was like wait a minute I don't have to deal with that right mm. hell no there's mm. just something nope. about getting grown that mm. makes you be like you know what mm. you can go yeah. especially as me you know especially yeah. as me because you know y'all mature way faster yeah. than we do so I was like 40 I actually felt like an adult like mm. I'm a grown man at yeah. 40 then I just started to have I had to act like one. right so, yeah Mm. So I want to ask this question Mm. because this is a question that plays on my timeline a lot. And it's about the responsibility of a man to his mate financially, emotionally. What do you think is the is the commitment or the the responsibility of a man to his woman and vice versa even? If they're in a relationship. Yeah, if they're in a relationship. We ain't talking about this random suit down. I don't pop financially. Um. I'm just going to take for granted that they live under separate roofs. Yeah, we'll just say that. Yeah, of course. Because marriage um, shouldn't be... No, but th- let's say that. I, I think if... I don't think he's responsible for paying the bills of her house. But I do believe if she comes to him... And this is my thought process. Mm-hmm. Most women, they're going to... Nowadays, they're going to take care of their own. And if they come to you, that's because she actually needs to come to you. Right. And a man should understand that. So if she coming to you... And she asks you, then you give it to her. That's I, I feel that's a responsibility if you know her. Or you may be like, you know what? I'm going to get your hair and nails done this week. That ain't your responsibility. You don't have to do that. But just say, hey, that's fine. But I, I feel like if she's coming to you and asking, uh, I feel like as her mate, uh, he should. What do you if, think, Tim? Yeah. It's, um, it's very me. hard for me to ask for anything. <laughs> so, we, it is for women who we'll take care of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is if if I come to you, then I need it exactly. But yeah, because I I uh, I figure out all kind of different ways before I go to somebody. Right. It's really crazy, but that's just who I am. Like I'm really, I'm really I I I, I have a lot of faith. Right. But and when I women really believe it always man, works out. It's usually because but, look, I don't. I expired all the things that all I could every do. Every possible, especially thing. if you got a woman like who handles her business. Yes, you know? and I don't like asking a man for anything. Mm-hmm. So it's you know, so it's it's very it's very hard for me. It'd be very very rare for me to ask a man for anything. So I'll try to figure it out. Do you have an obligation to him in any way to help him? If, if let's just say he now, I would help him. Help him. I'm yeah. good for that. Yeah. I'm good for that. Like I, I love helping people. So it's yeah, you can pretty much come to me. I give you my last right. name there to would help you out. And I don't know, I'm like that. But. Could you accept it if it was if your woman if you needed some help and you know how would that play out for you? Uh, I would accept it. I learned a long time ago about having pride mm-hmm. and not accepting help. So especially, I mean, if I need it, I have no problem with that. That does not make me less than a man that I because I accept help from a woman that has nothing to do with my ego. I don't care about that. I need this done. <laughs> right, right. And if she can if she can help me and she sees right that I can't do it mm-hmm. because of course I'm going to try to do it. Right. Sometimes it was illegally. <laughs> oh lord. Don't so, ain't yeah. trying to go that route. However, <laughs> I have no no problem with that. Right. And I have, I have no problem being humble about that. So, yeah. so would you ask Oh yeah, if it got to that point, <laughs> you'll be like, "Look, yeah. baby, right? Listen, <laughs> I, I, I ain't got it. Oh, I ain't got it. <laughs> but see, she already gonna know that. She does. She's already gonna if she know. She's paying attention. She, she's gonna yep. see what I'm gonna do 
As long as you see how see what I did there. I just look like this. I ain't slow. <laughs> but she's already gonna know that. Okay, I see him trying because a lot of times mm-hmm. women want to see the man try. Like, don't just come and yeah. you. Let me see. Let me see. See the effort, and yeah. she wants to help. Yeah. Well, she holding herself back, trying to see what you gonna do. Like. Mm-hmm. And a man gotta understand if you got her, she got you. In the story, absolutely. If if women are good for making sure that they man is good, that's just who we are. Absolutely. Period. But when you don't have my back, it's gonna be very hard for me to cover you in any way mm-hmm. possible. Absolutely. I just can't do it. Yes. It's hard. Yes. Very hard. And other people make it hard for the next person as well. Wow. Which I, which with me, I'd be like, you know what? Next time I date somebody, <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> But then I'll you be know what I do. I ain't doing nothing. And then him all your work. Yes. All, your... <laughs> all this thing. Oh, I'll be like, I ain't doing I, nothing. I but then so. just me. Yeah, like I'll be right it. back. Yeah, you right back in the mode of the art. Oh, yes. And if I try to not do it, I feel funny. And this is what I tell women. You are who you are. Be who you are to the person who who acknowledges appreciates and appreciates it. who you are. You Absolutely. can't be that to everybody. everybody. So don't change who you are. Change who you are, you know, to the part. Yeah, person absolutely. Gonna be that. I Ernest, definitely know that. Yeah. Ernest said, why do we wait until we really need before we ask? Because we're trying to wait. Like we just said, we got pride. Right. Like we don't want to ask our mate who we're dating. And, and not to. only that, if we're used to doing, doing things, things on, on your own. own. Yeah. Absolutely. It's very it's, hard. It's, it's difficult when you got the flip side of that. The flip side of that coin is you have people who have people always do things for them. So when it's time for them to do something for themselves, they're lost. Mm-hmm. So execute. it goes both sides. Yeah. So it shouldn't be any pride in a re- in a relationship. Honest, I do agree with that. But our life experiences just and our independence individually, it just kind of leads to that way. And it now let me ask you, as a man, if you have a woman that's doing a lot for you, how does that make you feel though? If she's doing a lot for me, meaning like money and gifts and and we're together. Hmm, what's the and question? It, no, you together? said that's, yeah, that's yeah, my mate. Yeah, yeah, together. If, 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 if that's, that's your my, mate, that's my mate to me. It is really because she's doing that because of the energy that I'm mm-hmm, giving her. Exactly. And, and it's not always about uh, money. She may go out and buy me some cologne, but she knows she don't necessarily have to ask for a foot massage. She can just sit there on the couch. And and put her her legs on me, right? And she know automatically she go get a foot rub. Men and women, we need different things at different times. It's right. not always equal or the same, but it balances itself out in the end. But that's just my interpretation of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this again. A lot of this has a lot to do when when you when you're in a relationship or or you've decided to be intentional with each other. I think when when you're casual or you're dating, I don't think you should have really any expectations of the person. Literally, I don't. I just don't think you do because that's not the point where you should expect me to do. I'm trying to still figure out who you are. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who you are. I don't. I don't give myself to you in that regard until I've figured out that you are a person that I'm willing to do that for. So in this day, I don't know nothing about you. Like really, I'm still trying to figure out if you lie, what your you know what your mom and them do, and you know do you have cousins in jail? I'm trying to figure out who you are. <laughs> figure out things about you that matter are you stingy do you like to go eat and vote i mean i'm trying to figure it out things right. that i need to know that's going to help me make decisions like you know what i can i can go a little further with this as long as your cousin ain't got a felony <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> i know that might have been much but i'm saying yeah, i don't know what's been... going down yeah i feel you know, it went fast i know right time to go no no <laughs> we good we good yeah mm. <laughs> okay, so Candy Cane said, I think you should know some of what they went through so you know where your mate has been. But after that, leave it behind. Okay, Candy Cane, I dig that. I dig that. Yeah, I believe that. that. I think I don't think um you should be sitting like I tell people, drive through it, but don't sit there. Right. A lot of times people want to sit in that pain and sit in that yes. past. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. It you happened. went through it, right. it happened. Keep it moving. If you're not going to keep it moving, then don't date. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you're not over it. So why would you bring that into a new situation and you know you're not past it? 
Because a lot of people try we to We are all it. broken. They're trying to no, but we're band-aid. broken alone. Yeah. Don't be broken and we're bringing it with, to, to somebody else. Another relationship and use it as a band-aid for the one right, that's that you hurting. already hurting and from that and way, you still hurting. Right. And you peel it off that band-aid all nasty and bloody from the injury that you have. Now it ain't no good. You got to throw it away because you were never healed. You can't do anything until you're healed. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people do that, though, and a lot of because people don't want to be alone. Mm-hmm. So therefore, they want to, you know, have that comfort of someone to be around them, be around me and da da da, knowing that they broken, knowing right. that they messed up, knowing they don't want anything. Right. But they still want somebody around and that's not fair to the next person who is ready. Right. Go get your dog. Yeah, and go you get, got a go person, get your dog, go get your You puppy. got somebody who's go ready right. and want to be in a relationship <laughs> and, and thinking that, "Oh, yes. this is doing uh-huh. going somewhere." Go and it's, and they just Looking at it as a pet. Being al- it is nothing wrong with being alone. Let me look at the camera and say this. It is nothing wrong with being alone, okay? It is nothing wrong. I tell people all the time, I am never lonely. No. I may live alone, but I am never, ever lonely. As long as law and order is on, baby, I would yeah. never be by myself. You, you said yeah. <laughs> Honey, me, that couch, and that pillow, is, ooh, we are together <laughs> for a long time. But that's because I enjoy but my you own like company. some companionship too, though. Well, I don't do. care. People can say that, but you want some companionship. You but, want somebody to talk. You want somebody to miss yeah, you. Yeah. You want somebody to say, you know what? I was thinking about you today. But know what it that ain't nothing that like that. It's nothing like that. Like that. It's nothing like that, but know what that is. Just don't go get it because you're lonely, though, because you will run, you'll run up on anybody that's, that will just give it to you because you're feeling like, I need that. The best thing to do when you're feeling lonely is truly find you something to do and find you some friends. And if you're feeling lonely for the opposite sex, sex find you a friend that you can hang out with. Because literally, that's all you kind of want is that opposite sex companionship yeah, that's that doesn't have any obligation. But just enjoy that person so that you don't have to start giving yours again, setting yourself up to give yourself away. Mm-hmm. Just just learn what it's going to take. And it is hard because it's like an addiction. It's hard to break when you've been used to being with somebody or being under somebody mm-hmm. or on top of somebody or, or whatever it is. Or the flip side of that, when you're so used to being by yourself and mm-hmm. then, then bringing people into, into your space, space, that's hard. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you, you've created this comfortable world space within yourself and then to bring somebody in it. It, it, it can be frightening because you don't know if they're going to disrupt right. this piece that you've worked so hard mm. to, to get yeah. to to have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's and true I'm, too. And, and peace I'm, is I'm everything. Just, I'm just yes. in the mirror come on. Talking. Don't right. Peace me. is everything. <laughs> Baby. I'm, I'm looking Man, in the come on. Like for real, peace is everything. The best thing you can do for yourself by yourself or even not is to have you an accountability partner. You have to have somebody that gives you sound advice because you're only as good as the person that, you, that you're hanging with or keeping company or your counsel. You have to have right the right people to help you talk through things because right. a lot of times you can't see things through your own eyes. Right. But you got to have correct counsel too, which means you can't be poison. Somebody mad. I'm talking about somebody that's like a girl. You know, he ain't nothing. Everybody ain't nothing. It's got to be somebody that has a balanced voice. And so you have to make sure that you have that in your life because you'll keep listening to yourself to the point where you, you absolutely wrong, but you'll keep moving in that because that's all you have to right. listen to. So you, you definitely should have someone that has some sense to talk to. A Absolutely. lot of men don't have no folks. Not men either. Women too. A lot see, of people. You see what I'm I said? Oh, yeah, you almost went there. You almost went there. You almost went You almost went No. And, 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 and you know what? I, I will say this because, I've again, I've been a victim and a proponent of it. A lot of times. <laughs> Man, we will encourage each other's BS. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We have this thing. I, I told these guys, if you tell your wife you come into a meeting and you don't go to the meeting and she called me <laughs> and saying, okay, was he at the meeting? He wasn't at the meeting. Mm-hmm. Because we got to hold each other accountable. Right, that's true. We don't, we don't, I, I don't play that. I'm, I'm not doing that because you know why? I don't want show woman looking at me crazy. Mm-hmm. I want my yeah. name to be clean. Right. So when, she, when you tell her you're going to hang out with me, she'll be like, you know what? You can go hang out with him. Exactly. Yeah. If you're hanging out with this guy, she'll be like... Mm-hmm. Right. So that goes yep. back to what I said when we first started. A lot of times, I think men, we have to hold each other uh, accountable mm-hmm. uh, for, for what we, we do. And mm-hmm. women, too. Your yeah, girlfriend. Quit, telling, quit hating on every man just because you ain't got a man. Quit saying all ooh, men are dogs. Because all men are not dogs. No, there are not. some decent men out there. Yes, you understand are. you attract a certain... You have an energy that you attract a certain type. And yeah. you got to be clear 
that of what that energy is. So yeah. your energy attracts a certain type. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. What kind of energy am I giving off right now? <laughs> I ask you a question. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Right, if you can hunt, you can hear. <laughs> what, what kind of energy am I giving off right now? You giving off a positive vibe right now. No, like don't you. answer for her. I see no, what you did there. I'm just answering. Don't oh, you asking? Her. Oh, I'm asking her. Okay. Well, I, she I, she I, like I, this. <laughs> you can't even look at me in my eyes. No, honestly, you're giving off of all the right answers, energy. That's what you're giving off. You got all the right answers. I just need to know. I couldn't go based on just spending time with you right now. I would have to be in your presence to see what you do. This would not give me enough to go on. All the right answers. You give me that it sound good energy. But I can't be like, yeah, that's exactly what you do. I would have to get in your presence and see how you move. And we can tell that if you spend time alone with the person. Tina B, right. what kind of energy am I giving off? <laughs> You got all the right answers, energy. But you positive though. <laughs> I, you believe in what you're saying though. Because what I, what I'm saying is true, and that's the reason why. Why? Because I've admitted my mess ups. Like I know mm-hmm. I've been that immature boy. I know I had to grow. I know I've cheated. I've I know all of that, and I'm willing to own mine. Mm-hmm. That's just the difference. Some men own it. Some some of it don't. But then we we learn from it. But when do y'all learn from it enough to say, okay, this is who I this is who I want. I want to see if he's gonna answer the same. When do y'all learn it enough to say that? When you got somebody in your face, which I'm sure a lot have passed, came and passed. When do you say, okay? I am absolutely positive that I have missed out on some great women. I am absolutely certain. Perhaps they wasn't the great woman for me. But here's to answer your question. Here's what I think. That will probably happen with me. Either it's going to hit me like a brick and I'm going to wake up one day and be like, oh, wow. What is this? And I'm caught. <laughs> or it's going to go to the other extreme. It's going to be logical for me. I've been and already went through it in my head. Like, you know what? OK, I'm ready now. So you haven't done that yet because you just said that. You've done some things where you know that you're at a certain point. So you haven't reached the point yet that you're. I've done it, but it didn't work. But it. So you haven't reached the point yet where that you know that you wanna, you need to do right. You you gotta do. I'm not doing right. I'm not doing wrong. No, I'm saying. (laughs) Wait, wait a minute now. I'm not doing wrong. I see what you did there. No, but what I'm saying (laughs) is you you reached a point where you knew. Like I. Again, that little brief time that I had after my my last situation ended, like I was broken. Situation. <laughs> my, my 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 marriage, marriage. ended. Okay. I knew I knew I, I was broken. Mm-hmm. I was immature. Mm-hmm. I was an insecure boy, and I acted out. But then I knew I had to grow. So that means I had to be honest with myself. I had to look myself in the mirror. More importantly, I had to really be honest with women. Like, hey, this is where I'm at. Here's what it is. Don't try to figure me out. Mm-hmm. I need you to listen and understand. Whatever you do after that is on you. So as far as what you say about, I guess, you know, when that woman come along, either it's going to hit me like a ton ton of bricks and I'm going to just fall head over heels or I'm going to be logical. And I've been thought about it and made a conscious decision. I don't make decisions anymore about how I feel. Mm -hmm. It has to make sense to me. It has to be logical to me. And I think when going into relationships, that should we, I think that falling in love is irresponsible. I think that when you fall in love, you have just allowed whatever to happen just to happen. And then you have, you run the risk of putting yourself in a place that may not be good for you. But when you choose love and you decide to love and you decide to use some logic along with those feelings, then you can make some sense of creating at least a more stable or more, uh, better percentage of making that love make sense and last longer because falling in love is usually whirlwinds and i mean not all the time but a lot of times it's whirlwinds it's feelings it's emotions it's oh my god it's how i feel right now and it has nothing to do with who is this person why are we good together what makes this work we need to use those things when it comes to we're talking about life here we're right. talking about putting somebody in our space here. right so you Absolutely. don't fall into a business you don't fall into what car you're going to you purchase your you make sure you think about <laughs> What I'm about to put in my space and yeah. invest in. Yeah. And you should and do the same y'all, thing y'all when it comes to relationships. Everything together as yes. one. You know, business, so money, everything into one. Space. 
you know, you clean, Absolutely. I'm not, you know. Right, 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 right. So you, you know, I got a hundred thousand shoes. <laughs> you know, right. you, you know what I mean? So it's like, like yeah, tell yeah. us you got a hundred thousand shoes. Okay, <laughs> just know that. I really like, ain't that wrong. Right? So it's like you gotta, you gotta think about all that type of stuff. When and you, you should get in a consider those whatever. things because, again, you're talking about doing life with somebody. Right. Why would you be so irresponsible to say I just fell all in? And now after all that feeling is gone. It, it makes no sense. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you, T. Marie, for being on the show, girl. You did girl, that. Yeah. You got us, like, listening and stuff. Like, that's the whole thing. First person. of all, I wasn't leaning like that. <laughs> you were. I was doing. She, she had my attention, but I wasn't leaning. We was, leaning. I know. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, do tell. Like that. Okay. That's <laughs> Carry on. See, that's I'm, how we was leaning. I love that. Tell everybody where they can understand. find you in your show. They can find um, uh, me on Katrina T. Marie Curtis on Facebook. <laughs> Everything else is T. Marie, number four, letter U. You can Google T. Marie, and it'll pop up. Uh, it's T. Marie.com. Uh, on the <laughs> website, I'm everywhere. everywhere. Yes, she is. You are awesome. We thank you so much for being yeah, on the show. We appreciate it. And y'all can find me at tlamgmt.com or tlamgmt on Instagram. And you can find me words spoken by Mr. Outley, O U T L E Y, or Harold E. Outley on Facebook or Mr. Outley75 on Instagram. How do Facebook make And a big shout out to my mom. She won prom. Um, Prom queen, Ooh. her and her guy friend won prom king and queen. So if you yes. see the pictures flashing up, that's my mom. So that's so awesome. And um, shout out to Rep Your Act going on this weekend. Lauren Hunt, I'll be there on Saturday. So make sure y'all check that out as well. I have a big announcement so. for tomorrow if everybody want to tune in. I mean, I would do it here because it will be a premiere. Everybody would know. But if they tune into my Facebook page tomorrow, I do have a big announcement. Okay, tune into so. her page tomorrow, you guys. Yay! Appreciate so thank y'all so much. We got another show coming up right after hours. So stay tuned for more AssassinNetwork.net. It's in the street with Tina B. And Mr. Outley, what up, Joe? And we out, y'all. Thanks. Get love.